In the U.S., many people like to hold up the Constitution as the most important thing ever written by mankind. They treat it as holy as the Bible. Now, sure, it's written well, and it has some really amazing, beautiful ideas in it. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what's written in it, because our current government basically wipes its butt with the thing all the time. And they're doing it again, right now, and no one even knows about it. And that's how much we care about our Constitution here. So here's the deal. Article 5 deals with adding amendments. It provides for two ways to do this. The first way is the way that all 27 amendments have been added so far. They go up for votes in Congress and have to get a two-thirds vote in both the House and the Senate. The second way Article 5 allows for the Constitution to be amended is for two-thirds of state legislatures to demand a meeting. And then Congress, quote, shall call a convention for proposing amendments. That's never happened before in our history. But Michigan state legislature just voted to call a meeting to amend the Constitution over our ridiculous budget. And guess what? It was the 34th state to do so, meaning that two-thirds of our states have now demanded a constitutional convention be called for the first time in hundreds of years. This should be a huge moment in our national history. But instead of hearing lots of excitement on the Washington, all we're hearing is crickets. Anyone who is paying attention is quick to point out that Article 5 is paid. And it's hard to determine what constitutes a real vote by a state. And then some states are voting, but then taking back their votes and then voting again. But no one really knows for sure how it's supposed to work because it's never happened before. But either way, the fact that two-thirds of our states have voted to have a constitutional convention called to write new amendments about our stupid government spending should cause a ruckus in Washington. Especially as our beloved constitution says we have to deal with it once that two-thirds requirement has been met. But our government is just basically ignoring it. Because of course they don't want to impose rules on themselves over their corporate spending. So this is just another example of our government treating our Constitution the same way they treat the Bible. That is, they treat it just like toilet paper. Today, let's talk about that by following me on Twitter at The Resident. Davis. There's a huge ball of crazy in this story. Let's see if you can figure it out before I say what it is. Ready? Okay. Mary Galligan used to lead the cyber and special operations team at the FBI's New York office, which is the agency's largest surveillance operation. She's now a privacy consultant for the financial behemoth Deloitte. She knows a thing or two about cybersecurity and surveillance, in other words. And she recently told CNN some of her top tips for how to protect your privacy. One of the tips she told CNN is to give the wrong contact information at checkout. You know when you're just trying to buy some toothpaste and the checkout clerk asks you for your zip code or phone number? Galligan suggests giving fake information at that point. When you do give them that information, it gets aggregated. So retailers can find out much more about you, like how much money you make, your credit card history, birthday. Lots of information can be revealed when it gets aggregated. So it makes sense to give out fake information, like Galligan herself does. The next tip, she told CNN, is to not show your driver's license when you're asked for photo ID. She says, the next time your doctor's office asks for identification with a photo, show them something else, like your work badge. That's because driver's licenses show more information, including your birthday and address, not to mention your driver's license ID number. So it makes sense to show another form of photo ID to protect your information. Another tip Galligan gave CNN is to set up a separate email account that is just for marketing. When companies demand you cough up an email address just to buy something, she says just give them this dedicated junk email address you've created. Then any information that is aggregated or parsed in any way, shape, or form will stay separate from your real email account and your real identity. Those are some of her tips, which sound like they make sense. So, did you catch the crazy part? If not, here it is. These tips from a former FBI agent are all designed to protect you from corporations or other institutions. They aren't to protect you from hackers or criminals. 
this former member of our national police is giving us tips to help hey, us yes. to protect our privacy and identity from our companies. It should be our government's job to legislate that protection from unscrupulous corporations and institutions. But that's not how it works in the U.S. Now, we need tips to protect ourselves from our criminal corporations and government, too. So says the FBI. And there is your huge ball.